Hey everybody, this is Silveraj. I like to quickly brush up Cinema 4D. Along the way, I'll share these videos so it may help someone who starts learning Cinema 4D or who like to brush up Cinema 4D from scratch. This series of tutorial will help anyone to get hands-on Cinema 4D and get used to tools. So we will cover mostly the essentials of Cinema 4D interface, modeling, material, MoGraph, lighting and rendering. We'll use Cinema 4D Studio version of release 20. But don't worry about the release versions, as most of the features in the different release will be the same. A side note, I am using macOS for this tutorial, but this is not going to affect our learning curve. For reference, I have attached a document of layout and essential keyboard shortcuts in the description. Ok, let's jump into Cinema 4D. We will cover pretty much every aspect of user interface. We will start with the menu bar. Menu bar will be similar to any other software which has most of the options in the software. We don't want to deep dive into menu bar now as you will find very easy without going to menu bar at this stage. Right below your menu bar, you can see control bar which is most important for everyday use of Cinema 4D. I'll just quickly create a cube to explain this control bar. Undo and redo button. This is self-explanatory which helps to undo or redo any action which is done in Cinema 4D. Live selection tool. It's a regular selection tool in Cinema for selection. It is default to select anything in the workspace. Wherever you see the small triangle in any tool, it denotes there are more than one tool in the box. So you have to click and drag the box to access other tools in the set. The next tool is move tool which is to move the objects. Scale is to scale the object. And rotate is for rotating the object. Next button is the history of tools that I have selected. So whenever I have to come back to the tool, I can use this button. Next is the access lock key, where I can deselect any access to stop accessing those accesses. For example, deselect X and Z. Now click anywhere in the viewport and move the mouse. The object will be moved only in Y axis. Next is the coordinate system. When we are in a 3D software, you have two different coordinate system. If I rotate the cube, even the coordinate is rotated. Now I can move the object in its own coordinate and this coordinate is called local coordinate. But when I click on world coordinate, you can see now the object is moving in world axis. Now let us have a look at next three buttons. The first one is used to render your current view. The second button renders the image to your picture viewer. So all the rendered image will be there in your picture viewer. So you can save or compare the rendered images. You can also use render region button. So it will render only a certain region with less time. Next button is render settings. Here you can change different render settings which we can see in detail later. With this button you can create basic objects like cube, sphere or cone which can be used in your 3D scene. We will cover this area in detail in our modeling session. We have a default camera in Cinema 4D and we can move this camera, pan, rotate and zoom. We can use 1, 2 and 3 button for pan, zoom and rotate the camera. There is another way to do the same. The same pan, zoom and rotate controls can be accessed through these buttons. We can create our own camera which we have full control. We can create the camera by clicking on this button. 
This camera moment can be animated and the camera attributes such as focal length, depth of field, focus distance and so on can be controlled using the attribute manager. Next is the lighting tool. We have different kind of lights with different characteristics. One or more light can be used in a scene to achieve the required output and various attributes of each lights can be controlled. For our convenience, we can separate the viewport into different layouts just by clicking this button. Now each view shows the different perspective. To scale up one of the view, we can use this button. To go back, click on the same button. This is really helpful when we are modeling or setting up the scene. Now let us have a look at the other layout elements in cinema. In the top right corner, you can find Object Manager. This is the place where all the objects in the scene is placed. The important feature of the object manager is its hierarchy capability. For example, you can group two or more objects. Now I can move the null object to move all the objects in the group. Else I can move only one object by selecting that particular object. Attribute Manager have the attributes of tools or objects we have selected. For example, I can change the coordinate of the object here. And the Coordinate Manager can change the scale, rotation and position of the object which can also be done in Attribute Manager. At the bottom left, we have Material Manager. To add a material to an object, you can just double click on the empty space. A fresh material will appear. You can modify the material accordingly. To apply material, just drag and drop the material on the object. One important thing in any 3D software is how to have a control over an object's shape. The basic object what we create is still in its initial state which cannot be edited. But we can change it by selecting the object and clicking on this button. So it is editable now. Now we can change the shape of the object using different work modes. This three buttons is for different work modes. Point mode which displays the vertices of the object so we can modify the vertex points. Edge mode which displays the polygon edge of the object so we can edit the edge of the polygon. Surface mode which displays the surface of each polygon so we can directly click on the polygon and modify. If you want to move the entire object again, you have to change the mode to object mode. So now we can move the entire object. That's it for this lesson guys, we'll catch you in next part.